a shin show, a shin show, a shin show, a shin show. You know, it never gets any better. I don't know no, why it not. Does. It does. And I was the only one that joined in, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure oh, you were yeah. the only one who joined in. I didn't in. want to make it any worse. Well, <laughs> well, so far, so bad. Anyway, welcome to A Shin Show. I'm Pete Shin. I'm joined by Guy Shin, Noah McCone, and Bradley Hamilton, all members of the Shin clan. We're brought to you by Ziff's, a fine dining establishment in Inville, Cargill's, New Zealand. They don't actually sponsor us, but one day they will. So get on down when you're next time you're in New Zealand, head on down to Ziff's Fine Dining Establishment in Invercar Gill, New Zealand. And anyway, we're also brought to you by the Akron Zips for no apparent reason. Akron Zips. It's a college whose mascot is the name Zip. All right. So welcome to a Shin Show. Guy, thanks for joining us again. You're welcome. <laughs> that was surprisingly funny all right noah thanks for being back on the program no here to help always here to help then stop fucking doing what you're doing with that fucking noise every fucking week what <laughs> oh i thought that was like legitimate and i was like oh okay so i guess we're gonna start screaming at each other no, it was legit. I'm frustrated. Why, dude, why can't you stop doing whatever you're doing in the background while we're doing this? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Are, isn't I'm that, sitting at a fucking computer desk, is, Isn't that, isn't <laughs> that you making a bunch? Who's making all the background noise? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't hear I anything. Hear it. So if I hear the background noise, how can it be me? Yeah, I heard like a bit of something, but I'm not sure what it was. Good point, man. I can turn everything <laughs> off in my room. <laughs> I'm pretty... Fix it in post. See, I, I have one uh, quiet fan on, so here, let me turn that off. No, no, it, it can't be that. Nightmare. It's not that. It's definitely it's not that. Uh, I don't know no, what no, it no, is. No, 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 Allow me. Allow me. <laughs> oh, did that, did that fix everything? Uh, Everything's so much better now. It is. That, I'll tell you, that's funny stuff. That's uh, that's staying in. Anyway, so welcome to a Shin Show. <laughs> Uh, and uh, let's start, as we do each week, with a roundup of current events. And, of course, the major current event this week is that we have a brand new Supreme Court justice. Uh, justice, what's his first name? Brett? Uh, I don't know. Biff? Uh, douchebag, Kavanaugh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no, he's a bit of a douche. Really? Okay. So, Guy, do you feel that way also? I mean, or is this just a youth movement going on here? Uh, you know, I, and I don't personally know him, so it's hard to it's hard to say that. Personally, I think he's a douchebag, but uh, I think I don't, I'm not entirely sure he has the right temperament for a judge. Fair uh, enough. And I don't know if that justifies me calling him a douchebag, even though he may be one. I don't, I don't, <laughs> like I, again, I say I don't personally know the man, so he could very well be a douchebag. He could. It's hard to say. I don't know for a fact whether or not he is a douchebag. I just know it is interesting. Both he and Neil Garouche, the other new. Supreme Court Justice, whose name I also really don't know. They both went to the same Georgetown prep school. And what that suggests to me is not so much that they're both douchebags. What it suggests to me is that we have a system of power in place in the United States where if you go to particular schools and you graduate with particular degrees, you're going to be running the country. Yes. So, a good school to join, the Akron Zips. <laughs> I'm not sure the Akron, Akron Zips, Zips qualify as uh, one of the schools that will launch you into the corridors of power. <laughs> but, Brad, here's a oh, fun yeah. fact. I tried to talk your mom into spending $48,000 a year to send you to, um, oh, what's the word? It starts with an A. It's a private school in New Hampshire or something. Because there there are some some private schools that will launch you into the corridors that will at least help guarantee you entry into Ivy League schools. And it's the Ivy League schools, if you graduate with certain degrees from Ivy League schools, that will basically give you a signed certificate to go work in Washington, D.C. in a powerful position. What he's yeah. saying, Brad, is he wants to send you to military school. No. <laughs> the school, it's called West Point. See you later. Actually, right. If you could get into that. No, the school is actually called Army Basic Training. Uh, and then it started with an A. Yeah, you were very like I said, it starts with an A. Anyway, um, yeah, I can't remember the name of the school. You know, uh, you your uncle Christopher used to say, and guy, I'm sure you heard him say this, that what any parent ought to do is take their child when they're six weeks old, put them on a train, and send them to boarding school, and say, "I'll see you on holidays when you're 18 years old. Have a good have a good upbringing and and life in childhood." 
<laughs> yeah, but that's what he said. <laughs> he said that many times. <laughs> that is exactly what he said. And now he's dead. Anyway, so uh, the question of... Uh, and dearly missed. And dearly missed. And uh, anyway, so uh, Brett Kavanaugh, douchebag or not douchebag, we don't know. But we know one thing for sure. He's got a job for the rest of his life. Yeah, I, I have something to say about that. I don't think that they should be employed for the rest of their lives. I think that it should be term limits. I think there should be term limits in Washington on everything. So I think you should get four years and out, four and done. That's what I think. That's a long time for a contract in most regular situations, right? Four years, that's a long time to do something. But imagine if you will. You know, where I work, we get three-year contracts. Seems fair enough. And you still don't do anything. (laughs) No? I'm sensing some tension. No, I I don't think I heard me. What'd you say? I said, and you still don't do anything. Uh, Occasionally I do. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i'm getting better yeah <laughs> when forced you know i mean that's uh, actually when you force the issue yes then then things happen well i mean the, the point the point of the matter is is that is that where i work um you know it's yeah you gotta pace yourself let's it, just put it that way it's true we've had this conversation the stretching's important it is. You've got to be careful. All right, so Brett Kavanaugh's got a job for the rest of his life, and I would agree with you that, to a certain extent, you have to think about the issue of, is a lifetime appointment the best way to ensure someone's independence? I don't well, know. I feel th- I feel that four years is like a normal term limit for a Supreme Court justice. It's just too short a time, because there's a lot of work that goes into being a Supreme Court justice. So I'm not saying it needs to be a lifetime sentence, or sentence, not sentence, a job. But maybe like maybe eight or like a ten year type of term because four years just isn't really enough time if you're going to put that much work into being someone. Hmm. All right. Fine. I, I'd, I'd even say, hey, you can retire. You can retire when a normal person can retire, but you can't sit on the bench until you have Alzheimer's and then continue to sit on the bench. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that you, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. That's why well, it will never like- happen in a million years. Yeah. <laughs> those people died at like freaking like 50 you know when th- those rules were made so. when was that last broad she died she was like 95 or something <laughs> she was. that last broad also known as supreme court <laughs> justice sandra day o'connor is that is that who to whom we are referring i don't know i, I don't know what her name was but she looked like a mummy <laughs> 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 that's how long she'd been on there <laughs> not like a mom mummy either a mummy mummy yeah like a like a she looked like she'd been embalmed. Yeah, she probably had, actually. I mean, shortly after her death, not before. So, Noah, you had something to say, but you, I can't remember what you just said. What did you just say? It was said so unassumingly and self-effacingly that I couldn't hear it. What? That, that's. <laughs> it was something very much like that, yes. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm uh, I, I back on, on. So, hold on a minute. Is this the was a Brett Kavanaugh conversation over? We're we just talking about in general, like what's going on. Well, no, we were, we're talking about term limits. limits of Supreme Court justices. That's what we were talking I mean, about. Do, do you, I, actually, I think, think that everybody should have a term limit. There don't can't senators like you know get reelected every four years too for the rest of their life. It's, it's six, yes, six years, they can get reelected every six years for the rest of their lives. And believe me, yeah, some I'm of those folks have I been. I think six and you're done, man. Yeah, you know what, though? Like, it, like it, the American people, though, have uh, actually, you know who says, you know who has ruled that term limits are unconstitutional? Guess the American who? people. I give up. The Supreme Court. Yeah, well, there you have it. <laughs> hey, hey yeah, let's vote on whether or not we should keep our jobs for the rest of the, uh, our lives. All in favor? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> we'll make everyone else look like an asshole. What? What'd you just say, Brad? I said the Supreme, I said the, uh, I was at the Supreme Court, so like, yeah, we'll make everyone else look like an asshole and keep our jobs. Uh, make everyone else, yeah, maybe. Hmm. The freaking um, but the president has a term limit. No, he doesn't. Well, yeah, no, he I, does I mean, not have a term well, limit. He has, well, he has, two and you... he has. So, all right. So the deal is, you can get elected twice, and then after that, you're not allowed to get elected a third time. So it's not really, strictly speaking, a term limit. It's more, I guess it is a term limit. Yeah. 
right. Fair enough. Well, he could, after argument four now, years, could he not go? I think after four years, he could go back and try and be the president again. Yes, that's true. But you could. So oh, he could get another, technically, another eight years. No, 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 no. Works? no. I thought it wasn't how that works. No, you can only. I don't think there's that loophole uh, there. That's an interesting so what question. What you're saying is once you're president for eight years, you're done. Yeah, that's yeah. basically yeah. it. Although I could exactly see I could see President Trump challenging that. I could see him doing two terms, then sitting out for four years and then running again. And saying Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Just like Vladimir Putin. I, yeah. I don't think he'll live that long. Yeah, that's true. He's seventy two. Did you see that Vladimir Putin called the uh congratulate the MMA fighter that beat Conor McGregor? No, I did not see that. You're skipping ahead to yeah, sports, but that. this is current events. We're we're kind of crossing boundaries from current events into sports. But, yeah, I, there was never going to be a doubt in my mind that after a two-year layoff, at the least, Conor McGregor was going to have a very tough contest against this Russian. Well, yeah. I, I, I didn't mean to skip ahead. I, I was just, because we were talking politics, I thought, well, Vladimir Putin, he falls in that. He sure does. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely does. And Absolutely. not only I that, call him Vlad. his friends call him Vlad. <laughs> oh. I did not know you were his friend. We're pals. <laughs> <laughs> right. Much in the same way, you're pals with Val- Vladimir Putin, just in the same way the show is sponsored by Ziffs. It's very similar. Very similar. <laughs> yeah. As, as in, not at all. Uh, but still, yeah, right. It's so in that ballpark. But uh, yeah, anyway, so congratulations to um, Khabib. Nurmagomedov. Nurmagomedov. Yeah, that's what I said. I said something very similar to that. I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, congratulations to Khabib. I, I don't even know exactly how that fight went down. Anybody? No, how I, no. Connor tapped in the fourth. Oh, he tapped. From a rear naked choke. I see. Well, I, that'll do it right I there. I didn't even notice last night. I thought that like it was happening in like a week. I had no idea that was last night. No, I don't it, really it did. Catch up on MMA. It did happen last no night. Idea. In fact, yeah, it was also an incredible brawl. Uh, the Chechenian fighter left the left the fence and went after Connor's team, and it was a, it was mayhem. They thought it was going to be a riot, and people are going to jail. It's, it was a big deal. It's exactly what Dana White wanted to sell more tickets for the next one. Yeah, for, yeah. for Khabib Connor too. Do you think there'll be a Khabib Connor too? You know, I don't. I don't you know, it's hard to say. Connor Connor made his own. You know he's rich beyond belief. You know he got you got to you got a fifty million dollar purse or something ridiculous like that. Right. So, you know he's got so much money he don't know what to do with it all, and and he can fight if he wants to or not. I think his ego won't let him. I think he'll fight again because of his ego. I see, and we'll fight Khabib again because well, let's... yeah, I mean he's got to, he's got to beat Khabib. I, and he probably could have too, like you said, he's on a two-year hiatus. You know, he he was going to go the distance if he hadn't got choked out, probably. But now, not saying that I didn't see the fight because I won't spend that kind of money on pay-per-view. But I will watch it on YouTube the next day, and I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to. <laughs> That's fair. You know, I almost saw the fight. Here's what happened: we had our niece come into town last night, and she flew in at 11:27, and so on the drive back. We're driving back. Actually, on the drive there, we saw this place, a cigar shop that was open after 11 p.m. I thought, well, that's interesting. I'd like to buy a cigar. I've been meaning to get a cigar. And this place is open late. That's odd. I wonder if they'll be open on the way home. And sure enough, it's after midnight and they're open. So I pull in and think, well, what the heck? It turns out this cigar shop is a cigar shop that's connected to a lounge with a big TV. And they are watching the Conor Khabib fight. So, or it's about to start. Believe it or not, here on the East Coast, the fight didn't even start until around 1220. So, so, uh, so, you know, I go in and I, the guy sells me a cigar. He says, yeah, we're not usually open, but we got the fight. And this guy from Joyce, he weighs about oh, 250 boy. pounds. He's in, he's in khaki shorts with a black shirt, towel thrown over his shoulder, smoking a cigar, of course. He says, I'll oh, charge you to get in. You, no, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to at all. He says, hey. You you want to watch the fight? We're going to watch the fight. Come on in, watch the fight. I say, hey, I got my family in the car. Bring the family in. Now over 18, no problems. Bring them in. And I said, well, I'd love to, but, you know, I don't I don't think my niece could take the cigar smoke. And she couldn't. Uh, I don't think she could. Actually, I could oh, barely oh, take the cigar at smoke. At that point, she has no choice. 
<laughs> the fight's on. You got to roll with the punches. As it were. <laughs> One side smokes, the other side chokes. That's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I opted not to do that because I love my knees. So, anyway. <laughs> Aw. Yeah. Speaking of love your niece, why isn't Shan on this? She's a Shan. Her voice is shot, man. Her voice is shot. Oh, she can't she's, uh, Yeah, she's sick, isn't she? Yeah, she's she's not feeling that well. So I mean she's feeling okay, but her voice, man, you wouldn't you wouldn't recognize it. Otherwise it'd be great. Because, you know, without a female presence on the show, it becomes an instant sausage fest. Yeah, not who wants that? Nobody. That's Nobody. It. Especially with except especially with a stepchild involved. Yes, ex exactly. Yeah. And, I think technically it's illegal then. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, In at no. least twenty-seven states. All right, so uh, uh, so that's the next embarrassing failure, please. Yeah, that's kind of current events right there, right? So we got Brett Kavanaugh, we got Connor Khabib. Really, we can almost wrap up sports at that time. But let's move on to popular culture. Anybody see any interesting? Sports. What's that? Wrap up sports. We haven't even touched hockey. Oh, good point. Well, we'll get to it. We're oh, going to get to it no. because we're moving on right Please. now to to popular culture and um my question to you is anybody see any movies this week uh, i did not however oh guy you got something i did see a movie uh it was called this is an interesting find uh it's an older movie it was called age of consent now <laughs> that sounds bad it does before, before you <laughs> it pass judgment, let me tell you what it was about it was it was actually helen mirren's First feature length film from 1969, digitally remastered. And it's uh, about a painter that, uh, that it goes to a remote island in Australia uh, to reignite his creativity and finds a muse in Helen Mirren. Well, I bet in 1969 she was quite a dish. Uh, she was. And she's, she's, you know, there's, there's some, a small amount of nudity in it where you do get to see. Full frontal from Helen Mirren in 1999. Oh my goodness! Which may, may be of interest to you, young lads. <laughs> no, I'll be honest with you. I'm not feeling it. Okay. Well, Wait. it's better to Wait. see her naked then than it is to see her naked now. <laughs> oh no, that's actually, hilarious. guy. In fairness, uh, opinions probably vary on that. <laughs> I, if nothing else, it amused me. <laughs> yes, no doubt about it. Well, that's, so how was the film itself outside of uh, Helen uh, Mirren? You know, it's an, old, it's an old movie, but I enjoyed it very much. Okay, good. It's, it's free on Amazon Prime. Oh, so. so there you go. And it's called The Age of Consent, starring Helen yeah. Mirren. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's digitally remastered, and some of the photography is actually quite striking. Very cinematography, good. I guess you would call it. Yeah, I think you would. I think it, that's exactly what you'd call it. How about well, you? It's uh, the great, the Great Barrier Reef. It's really, it's really pretty neat show. All really right. Neat movie. The Age of Consent with Helen Mirren. Brad, you saw a movie review, I think, for a new film coming out for Venom, right? For Venom, yes. It was. If you saw my last movie review on Predator, it's the same source, Penguin Z O. Um, he started off very positive by saying the movie's dog shit. Um, <laughs> That's not positive, said, Brad. That's the opposite of no, positive. No, it's not. It's not. It, it, That's sarcasm. Not. Yeah, it is. I, 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 I lied to you. However, he was saying that it, it, it was making it off to be R-rated. He's like, no, it's PG-13. To remind you all, that's a very mild PG-13 movie. They cut out 30 to 40 minutes, which was Tom Hardy's favorite part. He was caught screaming at writers and walked off set. Um... And he was explaining that for the fight scenes, he just cut out like half of the fight, and then just like the next cut, it gets over randomly because they have to cut out like all the gore parts. So it's choppily edited. He said that the only thing kind of saving it, even though it didn't save it at all, was that Venom looked cool and showing his powers was kind of cool, but everything else was really not there, even though they had a really good cast. Mm, well, <clears throat> are there any hot chicks in it? Mm, opinionated. I don't remember her name, but uh, no, there's not. I, I, I'm pretty sure there is. I mean, it is a it's a superhero movie. How can there not be attractive? Is it Marvel actresses? or DC? Does anyone know? Uh, it's it's Marvel. It's Marvel. It's, Marvel. Okay. it's Spider Man's like villain. I'll any any thoughts cat. on whether you like Marvel or DC better? Uh, Marvel's better. Okay, I, that's I've heard that from many people. Oh, the DC's cheesy, but 
but Marvel's much better, more more realistic. Now, I did see the uh, extended trailer for Aquaman. Yes, the five minute trailer for answer. Aquaman. And what were your thoughts on that guy? Uh, Amber Heard looked real good. <laughs> so right, with Cal Drogo playing Aquaman, right, or whatever. Yeah, no, it's, uh, Jason Momoa is actually Aquaman. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. So, isn't Amber Heard Johnny Depp's ex-wife? He is, or she is. She is. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The secret's out. Uh, right. Take a walk on the wild side. Do to do 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 to do 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 do. All right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So good good looking film. See, I, in answer to your question, I think it is more movie specific dependent than it is a total overall universe. Right. So the DC movies, the Batman movies done by Chris Nolan, are all widely Amazing. regarded as among the best films ever produced. So when you say, well, the Marvel Universe, this now overall consistently over time, Marvel has produced probably more movies that most people would consider to be better films. But in terms of like the overall quality of the film, some of those DC films are absolutely just terrific. Yeah, I I mean, honestly, like Dark Knight, amazing. All the early Batman trilogies are really good, but they're not consistent with it. Because then they had we, um, Justice League, which was reviewed badly. They had, well, but like the cartoons were really good back in the day, you know. Oh yeah, I, I from from the cartoon. which was the one with Christian Bale who talked like this. Oh, that's the that, that's Christopher Nolan trilogy. Yeah, those that's trilogy, the Christopher yeah. Nolan films. Yeah, the Dark Batman Knight. Again, yeah, yeah, Batman Begins, Batman, Dark Knight, yeah. Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, that's well, I it. Thought the vo- I thought the Christian Bale voice was a bit unrealistic and unnecessary. Oh, <laughs> oh I loved it. It was amazing. It is a cartoon, yeah. you know, brought to life. Unnecessary. It really is. Yeah, that's the whole problem with these super uh, these superhero movies. It's amazing to me how popular they've become. I mean, yeah, once... Comic Con's a big thing here in Denver. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you know what that says to me? I, I, I have a theory on why these superhero movies have become so popular. I do too. Uh, you do? Well, here's my theory. My theory is that superhero movies have become so popular because there are actually so few real heroes that we can count on to represent our actual values, beliefs, desires. That So the American public has turned to superheroes, uh, a fantasy version of people who are helpful because the people who are supposed to be helping them are not that helpful. That's depressing. Although you could also attribute that to the decline in religion in America as well. Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Probably so. So not only are my politicians not helping me, but God Almighty's not helping me. And so maybe Superman will help me. Or at least I can go watch a fantasy of Superman helping me. Ditto. Yeah, it was terrible. Is that what you think too, guy? Yeah. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's move on from philosophy. I didn't think philosophy was even a subject. But on the subject of music, I did hear a new album from K.T. Tunstall. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Yeah. Uh, I had a movie. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Lay it on us. I, I saw the film My Neighbor Totoro. All right. This is this is oh. back on the weird Japanese studio oh, gameplay yeah. kick. All right. Okay, yeah. just and this one. This is anime, right? This is, uh, this is anime. Brad, have you seen this film too? Because you seem to want to try. I have not. I've only seen one studio I d I don't I'm not an avid fan. I've only seen one studio uh Ghibli Ghibli film which was ponyo and that was pretty good okay so it was amazing good yeah i reviewed that last time he did noah oh. reviewed ponyo last time which you would know had you listened to the podcast Ooh. Ooh. all right well uh here's the thing uh whatever you got me yeah i did okay <laughs> but, all right uh, so uh, anyway yeah, the, so the film's good and what d- describe this film again what's it called it's called my name or totoro to- to- i can't pronounce it's fucking japanese yeah. to- totoro my totoro. neighbor totoro or, so, or Totoro. Or words to that effect. How most Americans are meant to butcher it. But the um And what year was it the, made? It was made in nineteen eighty eight. So the only way to get a hold of it is to uh to find some version of that's subtitled, you know, there's no dubbed uh representation of this film. And uh, it's it's pretty good, you know. It's really artsy. It's all hand drawn and everything. Uh so it's very, very pretty. It's very it's just gorgeous. How but, did you uh, get a hold of it? It's kinda iffy. Where'd you find it? 
Oh, you know, very legal sources on the internet. <laughs> Got it. Let's just say it was on YouTube. Let's just say it was. Yeah. For the sake Something of argument. Like that. It probably is. Yeah. Well, let's just lie. Just... Uh, we're not. Uh, listen, Brad, no one's lying about anything. The The truth yeah, is. No. Listen, the truth is that Noah cannot recall at this time exactly where he found it. Is that a true statement? No, my mistake. I'm, uh, <laughs> where was I that night? All right. You tell me, Mr. Senator. You tell me. Yeah, well, there you go. So, my neighbor, Totoro, hand-drawn Japanese film, beautiful film. It's a beautiful film. Yeah, the, the plot line's iffy, um, but yeah, it takes place, basically. Uh, two kids move into a, a new house, kind of in the country with their dad, and there's these, like, weird little darkness balls, and basically the whole the whole film comes out with everything seems super menacing at first, but then it turns out, like, they want to help them. There's a lot of spirits and stuff, and I mean, I, I can kind of go into the plot, but it doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, you know, it, uh, basically they find these, these darkness balls and then they, they go forward and they're just like playing little kids. And then the little, there's two kids. There's one that's like eight one that's like four. And the four year old goes and finds these like bunny looking things that uh-huh. walk onto your legs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then she follows them into the woods and then uh-huh. she finds a really big bunny looking thing that walks onto your legs. Uh-huh. And that's Totoro. Uh-huh. Uh, His neighbor. And he's like a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That, the neighbor although you know really anyway so he's, he's in the woods right you know she's visiting him in the woods and eventually you know their mom is sick in the hospital you find that out and then you know i'm not going to spoil everything but you know it, there's a lot of spirits and there's a weird cat bus in there so you can kind of it's kind of horrifying to look at so you might want to see that uh you know it's, it's got some stuff in it all right my neighbor totoro reviewed by noah mccone and um yeah japanese anime thanks for that review and so moving on to music uh, K.T. Tunstall has a new album out, and I think that's worth a listen if you like K.T. Tunstall. It's uh, interesting. I don't even know the album. So K.T. Tunstall came to prominence with the song The Horse and the Cherry Tree in 2003. Ooh-hoo. Ooh-hoo. You, you probably don't even remember that because it was like you were... I remember pleased. it. Do you? Yeah, you do. Yeah. She's got another couple. She's got a couple of one-hit wonders there. I guess that doesn't. I guess they're not one-hit wonders if you've got more than one. That's a good point. <laughs> She's like there a three-hit. Three hit wonders. <laughs> right. She has a number of albums out, and they're all interesting. She's quite a good guitarist, good lyricist, and has... my Actually, my favorite album of hers is a double album uh, that she put out in 2011 that has a, a strong acoustic component and contains a cover version of The Boys of Summer, the Don Henley classic. Yeah, so she's uh, she's quite a good artist in terms of her ability to evoke emotion and... Uh, has always a good group of musicians around her, and I would recommend that as a, an example of modern female rock and roll that is worth I, your listening. I, I have a question for you, Pete. Yeah. Uh, some years ago, I sent you a CD, an, an Apple iTunes CD or something like that for your birthday. It was, uh, I believe it was Trucks and Tedeschi. Or yeah, Tedeschi, Tedeschi or... Trucks, man. Yeah. Yeah. I love that I album. I, I like the Tedeschi Trucks band, and I like Susan Tedeschi uh, in particular. She is an outstanding blues guitarist with a tremendous vocal range, and I like everything I've heard from her. Uh, if I remember correctly, I sent you two of them, and the other one was, uh, I can't remember, I think it was an Irish guy. Um, gosh, dang it, I can't, I want to say like Hoover, Hoover, Hover or something. Oh, Hosier. Yeah, Hosier. Hosier. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I liked that album a lot, but, I mean, after a certain point, I got tired of him. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, because it's it's repetitive, isn't it? It is, exactly. I mean, you've heard one Hosier tune. You've pretty much heard them all, and I still don't know how to pronounce his goddamn name. Is it Hosier? Is it Hosier? Is it Hoser? Is it Hoser? Hoser. I saw the uh, Pretenders uh, live in London on PBS, and I thought that was a very good... Of course, it was from 2011, but it was very good. It was a very good, uh, it was really good. I thought it was really good. Yeah, well, Chrissy Hind is a terrific performer. I mean, she always, she's she's just, brings all this rock and roll energy to the stage. And she has some wonderful lyrics over the years. Talk about a protest rocker that missed the moment in terms of, you know, Middle of the Road is a protest song. You, the, the, no one, Brad, don't know that song. You might might even be almost a little too young for you. Uh, Maybe. You know, I, I, it sounds familiar. Here, here are the lyrics. The middle of the road is trying to find me. I'm standing in the middle of, lo- of my life with my pants behind me. And I've got a mm. smile for everyone I meet, as long as they don't try dropping the bomb or, or 
bringing me down or dropping the bomb on my street. Something along those lines. Well, anyway, yeah, it's close to that. Here's my sage advice. Yeah. Okay. Take my advice. Pull down your pants and slide on the ice. That's right. That's right from our father. That's a good one. <laughs> That's, it, it was uh, also on MASH. <laughs> it was. But I think our dad had it first. That could be. I'm pretty sure Milton Berle had it before that. Yeah, very, very good, very yeah, good. Yeah, there's no original material. But um, you tie, so what, what would you what would you call it, a protest rock or something like that? Yeah, Did she's you, she's just, a protest rocker, a lot of protest rock, a lot of she uh, she also I, sings a lot about sex. Okay, mm. well, I found a new group. I found a new uh, protest uh, protest rock group. It's very similar to Rage Against the Machine. It's a bit more modern and a bit more heavy. Um, they're called Grandson. Oh. It's all lowercase. Huh. Super good stuff. Really? They have one song. Yeah, they have one song called Six O'Clock talking about police brutality. Um, they have a song called Thoughts and Prayers and the, the irony of it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They got uh, a bunch of good songs. Super, like, more heavy rock. It's super good to, like, hype yourself up. I would check them out. Grandson, very good. You know, another act that I've really enjoyed here recently is a guy called Fantastic Negrito. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Who's that was me. I was actually looking it up. Grandson. Oh, oh okay. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. save it. We'll save it for the post show. Although, oh, very good, very good. although the music was quite good. No. I mean, that's nice that we're introducing an element of music. Really, what I ought to do is put, insert some music in post. That's what I ought to do. Yeah. If I was really... Six o'clock, grandson. Super heavy. Not super heavy, but pretty heavy. Pretty good. If I was really good, if I was really a good editor, I would do that. Well, you know, I was uh, I was thinking, I was curious, you know, on these. Uh, I know uh, we're not we're not that big yet, but someday we will be. And uh, you know, like uh, like BJ and Jamie in the morning, they have a guy that just sits there and looks shit up on the internet for him. Yeah, we'll do that. Actually, a we. Checker. You know, we yeah, have one of those. Do that do that. Today. Yeah, we, it, we have Kyle do it. Actually, we could have you do it, Brad, or Noah do it, or myself uh-huh. do it. I mean, any or one I of us could do could it, do. or Sydney could do it. Right. Could There's have, really all of us can do it, and none of us will. That's the, the, the listen. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Okay, goddamn <laughs> <laughs> No doubt about it. The possibilities are indeed endless. And so much for popular culture. Let's move on to sports. So okay. So Noah, you uh, you said you wanted to talk hockey. Well, goddamn it, talk fucking hockey already. Uh, all right then, there. Eh? Don't be a hoser, man. <laughs> all right. So we can swear uh, on this podcast. Yeah, it's not the radio. <laughs> it's not the radio. There's a uh, so the Sens beat the Maple Leafs. All right, and that was a that was a pretty that was a heart wrenching moment for me. Right, okay. I wasn't sure if I should cheer for the Sens or Leafs. So I guess I'll be uh, I'll cheer for the Sens. You know. Well, I'm the, proud of the that. Sens are from Ottawa, Noah. The Sens are from Ottawa, where you're from, so I would vote for them rather from than Ottawa. I'm from, like, okay. a nowhere town four hours outside of Ottawa. I'll have but you it's, Thank you very much. you're in the vicinity more than Toronto. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, except for when I lived in Niagara Falls. Yeah, you mean, yeah. I was in Niagara So, look, here's the point. The point is, is lie, Brad. that when two <laughs> Canadian teams play, you don't know who to root for. Well, no, I know always. I always to root against the Montreal Canadiens. All right. Okay. All Those right. Quebecers. Quebecers. <laughs> Sons of bitches. Bastards. All right. So uh, the Senators beat the Maple Leafs. Good for the Senators. Bad for the Maple Leafs, obviously. But it's a long season. Hockey has about as long a season as baseball. They're playing hockey mm-hmm. now. They'll still be playing hockey in June. So it's true. Uh, so these games mean nothing. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Well, that's hurtful. But as a matter of fact, tonight the Maple Leafs will be playing the reigning champions, the Blackhawks. That will be an interesting game, I'm sure. For you, uh, indeed. I, I'm going to see an Avalanche game on the 15th with Kyler. We're going to see the Dallas Stars play the Avalanche. That should be fun. Yes. I see it right now. I see it. I see it in the charts. It's going to be great. And, uh, uh, yeah, the Capitals open up their title defense against someone and maybe won or lost. I know that much. Uh, Did you say on the I, 15th? Anybody know how the Rockies did? Just not to change the subject, but... Uh, uh, I think they won the last game. I'm not sure, though. No, they didn't. They lost big time. That's really annoying. Is Sorry, that... That. Sorry, I got an Amber Alert. Oh, uh, did you really? <laughs> yeah. Who's, uh... Who's missing? Let's yeah. put it on the podcast yeah. and get it out oh, there. I just... Yeah, I'll just spread the word. I don't, I don't pay attention. I'm... It was in Seminole City. It's. I don't even know where that is. It's in Florida. <laughs> I can tell you that. Well, yeah, can you now? Yeah, okay, so they're, uh, no, they've lost the both of their games against the Brewers, so they're in the uh, National, they the first one. no, they did not, 
I mean, I'm looking. You're so the internet <laughs> is available to you, right? Why don't you look yeah. it up, and then you will stop arguing with me. So, I trust my judgment more than the internet. Obviously so. And that's very, <laughs> that's smart, obviously. That's a very conservative viewpoint. Well done, yeah. sir. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but what the internet says is that in the National League Division Series, the Rockies are down 0-2, which means that that's it's wrong. going to be, yeah, it's correct, which means that they're <laughs> going to have a very difficult time coming back. Very difficult. Oh, yeah. without a question. And well, actually. A, I could go to that game today. Are they playing today? Yeah, 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 at the Rockies. Yeah, they're playing here. Well, it says here, it says here that game four. Okay, doesn't say where game three is. Oh yeah, it's today at four thirty-seven p.m. There you go. Two thirty-seven p.m. our time. Good but... point. Yeah. So you're gonna go? Watch, no. Watch. No, you're not going to. It's smart because the Rockies are likely to get swept. Yeah. By the mighty Brew. It's also brew. supposed to pour rain here this afternoon. Is it really? Uh, yep. Well, then, yeah, we're, we're actually expecting our first snow tomorrow. No kidding. Really? Yeah, yeah. it's a rain, a rain snow mix. So for for the Colorado for the Coloradoans, nothing. For the Californians, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a gridlock. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Which means since the majority of people who live there now are Californians, it's going to be gridlock. Right. The majority of people out here are from a. California, B, Texas, and C, Mexico. So it's going to be a mess tomorrow, folks. It sure will. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the rest of the series that are going on, none of the National League Division Series appear to be uh, competitive, or none of the Division Series, rather, because this is American League. The Indians are down 0-2 to the Astros, who lead that series by, by two games, obviously, a five-game series. And then uh, if you're looking at the the Yankees-Boston series, which is supposed to be obviously the marquee series, it's two you know real heavyweight teams that are going at it. I mean, that is the only series, I believe, that is split. That's 1-1. One, one. Yankees 1-6-2. That'd be the two. one to watch. That'd be a fun, that'll be a fun one. It would, I think. I Definitely, I agree with you there. would be a fun series to watch. And then you've got the Atlanta Braves and the... Los Angeles Dodgers that are tilting at it too, and uh, Atlanta is down uh, in that series. Two <laughs> games to love. So yeah, all of the series right now are two zero in favor of respectively Los Angeles, Houston, and Milwaukee, with the exception of the Yankees and Boston, which is a split series at one and one. So that's really the only series that's going to probably go the distance. Yeah, Thanks I have a bit of You're minor. Welcome. I have some minor news with baseball. Uh, after a 47 and 115 season, the Bu uh, Orioles have decided to drop Buck Showalter. I don't know if the numbers are completely correct on the record, but it's bad. So he's no longer the general manager of the Orioles. Yeah, I think they he's did in only about 47 games, which means that they lost yeah. basically 115. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Bad oh, series. Bad it's season. rough. Bad season for the O's. And it's a bad season for the Nebraska Corn Shuckers. Here's your weekly Corn Shuckers update. They lost again. They have uh, that means they're winless over their last nine games spanning two seasons. This time they lost to the Wisconsin Badgers. The Badgers burrowed through the heart of the Nebraska defense, crushing them by I think I think they only won by eighteen points. I think it was like forty two twenty four or something like that. But yeah. The Nebraska corn chuckers continue to get their ass kicked week after week. I think the Alabama. Broncos lost too this week on Monday night football, didn't they? Yeah, the Broncos did lose. So they, they did lose to the mighty chefs. And I tell you, the chefs look great, but the Broncos had a chance to win that game. In the final seconds, there was less than 30 seconds left. Case Keenum has the ball. He has a wide open to Marius Thomas, who is streaking towards the end zone for the game-winning touchdown, and Case Keenum over-fucking-throws him. I'm not well, saying that I'm a Broncos you know, in, fan and frustrated, in but... Denver, the the the... The radio stations here were making fun of the Denver Broncos pretty good. They're saying, you know, uh, Kansas City has a $500,000 a year quarterback that can throw passes with his left hand. And, and, <laughs> and their $16 million fucking, you know, quarterback can't hit the broadside of a fucking barn. <laughs> I think that that's a fair criticism. I think well, I'm pretty fair. sure I called this in last week's podcast, too. You, you sure did. You said that Case Keenum's a loser, or words to that effect. As I recall, well, I, personally, I don't think I don't I don't think that you know. Personally, I don't think he's a loser. I just think he's a loser on 
baseball field. Uh, <laughs> right. He's a winner in the game of life. I mean, he's a multimillionaire yeah, several I times he over. Is. I mean, you know, $16 million contract, sure. Yeah. Oh, $18 million a year. He's a $36 million man is what he is. Right. And we could have had that kid from Kansas City for five hundred grand, and we would have won some ball games. Thanks well, a lot, John Elway. <laughs> in John, we trust my ass. Hmm. All right. I think he may be he may be the one suffering from Alzheimer's. <laughs> wow. With apologies to Pat Bolin's family for that reason. And remark. Annabelle Bolin also has Alzheimer's. Apologies to her as well. Oh, she does? Really? Yeah, she does. She's she's out. It's it's Elway's deal now. Oh wow. Until he steps down, then the kids get it. Oh, well that's the American way, right? Aristocracy. You've Not... <laughs> I mean, I that is true. In the that. NFL, it's father to son type business. It's uh, yeah. out in Oakland. Uh, Al Davis's kid is running the show. Look how well that's going. It's not. Hey, listen, they're one and three. They managed to beat the hapless Cleveland Indians in overtime. Or Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland. Uh, that's, the, not, that's not at all their name. Yeah, well, they're Cleveland. Uh, sorry, they're the yeah. Brindians. They're the Brownians. Anyway, the point <laughs> is that the Cleveland Browns, very fun team to watch, but they can't win a game because their coach is so shitty. Oh, uh, oh! I think I called that last week on the podcast too about our coach. <laughs> you did. You said Vance <laughs> Vance Joseph needs to go. You said that. Yeah. You were very upfront. You have not wavered in your opinion. Right. But you're and right. I said it since the, he lost the first game. Yeah, that's true. You have said that. You've been very consistent. And the fact is, is that with a bad coach and a bad quarterback, you're going to have a bad season. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not hopeful. You know. You know what? Though I don't even have a TV, so it really doesn't affect me much. That's a good point. We've also covered that ground because you're not. Uh, you're no longer. You're not watching the No Fun League. You're not watching it. Well, uh, yeah. It's. I'm not watching anything. It's. It's. It's more of a silent protest against the man. Okay? <laughs> Honestly, if I could not have insurance, I would not have it. And then I'd go smash some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to stick it to him. Yeah, just to I stick it to the man. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, you're not quite as crazy as all that. You're crazy, no, but not quite as not crazy. Not yet. I'm no. close. Yeah, you're close. Not no, there. He's getting there. Well, I'll tell you what. This has been, I think, a great program. Is there anything that we're missing? I mean, we've covered the waterfront, current events, uh, music, TV, uh, movies, sports. Earth. But well, we never feelings. did say what the major events in our own lives. We sure didn't, did we? Hey, anything going on special this week, this past week in your life, guys? Nope. Uh, no, no, <laughs> Glad no, we not covered that. Not, not Brad can't wait. Past. Brad can't wait right not, now. He's got to talk right now. Wait. Right now, he's oh, got to say something. He's got to say it. Okay, Brad, what is it? Was it? Was that interrupting? <laughs> <laughs> now you make me feel bad for having opinions. No, um, you were you but... were definitely interrupting. Yeah, you were. Oh, that's, who was he interrupting? That's he was interrupting Boom. you and me. Oh, we weren't done. Jeez. We were wrapping it up. No. Yeah. Well, you're done now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 no, but this isn't really last week, but this is an overall thing that I was trying to get out the first time I was in the podcast, but I never got to say it. But uh, everyone in my third period, uh, which is AP government. Does not like me for my opinions on which how to deal with old people. So everyone in my third so period bad. is very. Uh, no, no, no. It's that. No, God. No, it's that. <laughs> I decided in the middle of class, we're talking about opinions, and in which I have them. I said, which is apparently very controversial to some people, that to say someone's like over 95 and they're just bedridden, they just can't think, they can't even move, they can't function. Why are they alive? They're just sucking up resources. Euthanization. <laughs> and everyone got really upset with me for some unknown reason. Like, I'm wrong. But well, they're just sucking. Uh, like, yeah, it's just. Yeah, I'm, so I'm you're. Right we copy that you're for killing old people. We get it. Well, I mean, only, like, really old. Like, <laughs> only really old ones. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not like, it's not like someone's like, oh, it's my 60th birthday, and you just, like, stab him in the neck. No, you don't do that. I, when they're, like, really, like, they're going to, like, die in a couple months. Like, they're, they're, they're not even eligible for a make-a-wish. I mean, there's really no <laughs> reason. I think, I think Oregon has something like that. If you're if you're actually terminal and don't want to suffer, you can well, actually. Well, Canada, Canada, yeah, Canada has an assisted suicide program, and I think that's really smart. So does Oregon. 
Yeah. 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 Euthanasia is actually becoming it. more and more popular Oops. across the world. Maybe, than across perhaps the if you framed it in a different light, Bradley, that people may be more receptive. And yeah, in, I did. In, in which you, you you used empathy instead of let's 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 you know let's you know they're sucking up our resources. Let's let's <laughs> Bastards. Well, here's yeah, how I phrase it. Kind of baseball bad to a delicate <laughs> subject, there, bud. Yeah, here's how I here's how I phrased it the first time without any actual evidence. I just kind of blurted out, "We should kill old people," and I was like, "Wait, wait, wait! Hear me out! Hear me out! Hear me out!" Yeah, yeah. and then they got a bit angry with me. Yeah, but so you should have probably more. started with an empathetic view of, you know, let's end their suffering. You know, yeah. well, we are the humanitarian thing and end their suffering. Yeah, see that that <laughs> kind of goes over better than let's. Besides, old like super old people, we've got the hospital and they're just like there. It's really kind of depressing. It's like I don't want to be here for this. Right. So let's cheer ourselves up by killing them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the grieving process becomes easier. Right. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, I I think for your sake, Brad, I might just edit all this out. We'll see. Because I hey, listen, listen, this is more no, than a podcast, stays in. okay? This is life lessons for the youth. <laughs> <laughs> it stays in. It's staying in. And this is wisdom. You're right. This is more than knowledge, my friend. This is wisdom. <laughs> it's the way of life. Which part of what but guy, which part is the wisdom? Is the part of the wisdom where you're telling him for God's sake change your approach? That's the wisdom. Yeah, yes. it is the I wisdom. mean, I, I had to learn that the hard way, right? I'm telling Bradley <laughs> Hey, take a diff- take a softer approach, and and you'll be better off, right? If somebody had told me that, I'm sure somebody did, but I wouldn't listen. But if somebody had told me that, I might be better off even still today because I still have a tendency to take Bradley's approach instead of the approach that I just mentioned. Well, it's also way funnier you're doing it my way. But we're not, yeah. <laughs> More that's, content. That's true. Laughs will only get you so far, though. It's true. It's true. Yeah, they felt that so far. Well, yeah, it's worked yeah. for me pretty well too. I take that back. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right. so much for the fucking <laughs> wisdom. All right, well, <laughs> continue on. <laughs> All right, so thanks for sharing something that happened to you weeks ago. And did anything special happen to you this week? No, anything big happened to you this week? To me? Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. I went to work. Yeah. Um, I ate food, so no, 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 I did. Nothing. Got, got engaged. You did not get engaged, did you? Did you get engaged? No, 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 I didn't. I mean, okay, that would be big. Money for that? No. Yeah, just for the record, if you ever do get engaged, you should mention that. I'm not telling you. Do you see a ring on that finger? No, you don't, because we're on a podcast, but that's besides the <laughs> <a> point. <laughs> All right, so, so uh, yeah, so you've not locked anything down. Copy. All right. And, no, and, I mean, well, Yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna. I was gonna move you. You. Well, I don't want to interrupt. I did. I did. I did have to deal with some heavy traffic yesterday because uh, there was a Gators LSU game. I guess this kind of goes with sports, but I forgot about it. There's a Gators LSU game. Yeah. And let me tell you something. When the Gators win, there are just hordes of people. Yeah. Yeah. And the I Gators mean, the did win, and they beat an undefeated LSU team in a rather convincing fashion. At the yeah. Swamp. No, it was twenty-seven it was nineteen. Like eight, eight up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks for that because that's uh, we didn't mention that the Florida State, uh, rather Florida Gators, knocked off the LSU Tigers by a score of twenty-seven to nineteen to defeat the undefeated Tigers. We didn't mention that, so thanks for bringing that up. Happy to help. All right. No, I didn't really have anything significant happen this week other than the normal, the just the normal stuff. Yeah, it was the nothing. Washing go. Oh, the power washing went great. And in fact, what's okay. next? What's next is the use of the spray tool. We're going to spray our fence, guy. I, I mentioned this because you're kind of a handy fellow. So we're going to yeah, use this. I, I have to, thought I might offer some words of advice on that. Yeah, I'm okay. listening. Yep. Um, I saw I, my, my old townhome, I had the, the people came to spray the carport. They were going to paint the carport. Yeah. And they said, move all your motorcycles. So I moved all my motorcycles in, and uh, they still oversprayed them. So if I were you to avoid any hassle with the neighbors, I would make sure there's nothing, you know, cause the wind carries that shit pretty good. So I'd make sure there's no cars or, you know, anything, any potential damage can be done to any of your neighbor's stuff when you're doing your fence. It's very good advice. Very, very, okay. very good advice. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. We need to put some butcher paper against the house itself for the parts of the, yeah, 
Yeah. Because we don't want to overspray this lacquer onto the house. Agreed. Yeah. And it's a real mess. And once you get one there, it's. What? Once it's there, yeah. it's there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once it's there, no question about that. All right. So we'll be careful on that front. Okay. Well, uh, are we done? Not quite. I, I, I don't want to say that it's a significant life event. Yeah. But I did finish trimming up all of my marijuana this week. Oh, really? And hey. How, hey, that's significant. So, uh, and how? What was your final yield, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, you know, I've yet to weigh it, but I have. I'm guessing that I have uh, somewhere around ten ounces. Okay, that's so God. that that estimate has not Damn. changed. <laughs> after my just... split, that's after my split with Patrick. I had to split it with Uncle Pat. Why did you have to split it with Uncle Patchy? Well, because he gave me the originally gave me the plants. Oh, I see. So this, the, I got you. So the, you yeah. didn't grow them from seeds. Uh no, I no, they were grown from seed. However, but they were when they were given to me, they were they were already you know saplings. I guess you would call them. I see. So did that entitle him to half? Uh yeah, I told him I would split it with him. Okay, fifty fifty. Well, that's a pretty good deal for him, I'd say. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and he also grew his own, and so he had his yield as well. So, and I don't think I gave him quite, you know, half of what I got. You know, we it was an, a rather uneven split, but he got he got plenty, and I got plenty. And uh, the interesting thing is, is I don't smoke, so I don't know what I'm going to do with ten ounces of marijuana. I would say just <laughs> just keep it stored, and uh, those who enjoy that sort of hospitality will enjoy that hospitality. When they do that's true. Yeah. Well, I can make a, some serious batches of brownies and pass them out at work. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Something like a lawsuit wouldn't happen. Uh, yeah. Oh, you could do that. That's true. Or right. yeah, open a bakery. Don't Who knows? Idea. What I thought I would do is not that I'm vindictive or anything, but I thought I'd make a bunch of batches of brownies, pass them all out at work, and then and then. And then inform uh, the upper management that we have a that we have a problem, and have everyone drug tested. <laughs> right, that's a good idea. Actually, just leave them out. No, obviously, you wouldn't let anyone know that you set them out, right? <laughs> right. Well, what we're trying to catch here is is we're we're killing two birds with one stone. We're catching a thief and a drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's like some storm. That's oh, cool. Now we're getting. I'm sorry. Now, I'm, now I'm, I'm re see, see, Brad and I think a lot alike. Yeah. Now we're getting to the true wisdom. All right. Now I'm done. I'm sorry. I that's good. That. that was very. You positive. may want to edit the entire podcast out of this week's podcast. Actually, <laughs> now that I think of it, you're probably right. This has been. Uh, this has been something else. That's for sure. <laughs> but I, I do certainly wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't uh, forward it to any of your close friends. <laughs> <laughs> they, they may not be your close friends anymore. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be the standard distribution list. There, it, you know, I am who I am. You are who you are. It is what it is. It's true. They say after after forty five, your personality can't change. Really. That's oh, what that's they impressive. say. I don't know who they are and why they say it, but that is what they say. I disagree. My personality's totally changed since I was 22. But then again, yeah, I am over since 45. You were 22, but how much has it changed since you were 45? Pretty much. It's probably, probably, you know probably what? not much. Actually, quite Maybe. a bit. It has. It's Really? Yeah. Ooh, oh, yeah. Contradicted. No, I mean, I, I think you're... I'm an optimist, of course, and yeah. my brain is pretty malleable. I'm, you know. Yeah. But, well, what I'm trying yeah. to say, I guess, is... Once an asshole, always an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wait a minute. Did we just circle all the way back around to Brett Kavanaugh? Is that what happened here? Yeah, I think so. We're bringing it back. All right. Although I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach as far to definitely call him an asshole. I'd say he's for sure a douchebag. And that's that's definitely been proven. But I don't, I don't know if he's asshole status. Okay. Well, and we'll never know because we're never going to meet him. Never going to talk to him. We'll never actually know. In and fact, we'll, this will we'll probably. Once he's once he's actually on the bench, you won't probably hear anything about it ever again. No, yeah, we'll forget about him. I hope so. I hope he's just a normal fella, you know, a regular guy, just making he's just, some good decisions for I'm the not country. I like that anymore. I'm just one of the fellas now. <laughs> right, that's a reference to Unforgiven. And on that note. A 
Shen Xiao, a Shen Xiao, a Shen Xiao, a Shen Xiao. None of you guys still not participating. That's okay. I am not getting involved. I'm sorry. This, I'm, is, a, I'm this is a silent protest. I thought we determined that uh, we couldn't synchronize, so therefore we weren't going to do that. <laughs> yeah, we clearly, uh, well, I forgot, but we're definitely not doing it. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously, we're not. Apparently. <laughs> The, the Shin Show signing off. A Shin Show is a production of Shinfluence and contains the voices and opinions of members of the Shin family. It's brought to you by Ziff's, a fine dining establishment in Invercargill, New Zealand. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> all right, thanks, fellas. I appreciate it. That was fun. What's an establishment? A shin. It's a shin. Yeah, shut up, both of you. <laughs> Is it a New Zealand? Is that is that like is that is that um like a messed up Swedish pronunciation? It sounds like, like it. Fucking thing off. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, are you on the app, guy? Are you on the app? Yeah, I am on the app. Yeah, okay. you gotta, so you I posted it out like five times, but it won't. Lower right hand corner. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna hit that button.